Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Frank, and with me is... Albert! And here we are. I've got the webcam set up. <laughs> Hello, Hi, Frank. Albert. How are you? I'm pretty good, man. Thanks. Oh, that's great to hear, man. Ah. I'm so glad that we can cast this, this game together now. Yeah, I, I love how we're in the same room. <laughs> yeah, exactly the same room. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, there's a lot, lot to tell, um, but we're just going to start the game. Uh, mm -hmm. So as not to uh, bore the crowd, no. uh, I'm gonna press play and switch to the game. Good idea, Frank. There we go. And as it's running, uh, we can talk Dutch StarCraft League and uh, how it is that we came to cast this game. So let's introduce the players first. How about you introduce our first player? Okay, here we go. In the top right, it is the purple or pink. I think it's actually pink. pink. It's the pink Zerg player. His name is... S N S N G G Storm. It's Storm. Storm is a Danish Grandmaster Zerg player, and he's up against none other than the winner of the Dutch StarCraft League's prequel, the Nijmegen Student StarCraft League. It is Isno Best. Isno Best. Yeah, he, actually, his tag right here is Isno, but I think it's because he has so many team names in front of it that well, he, he doesn't it doesn't fit anymore. That so is it's true. Isno right now. His, uh, his team is um, ARMS, or uh, you can't see it on the broadcast, but he's in the clan ARMS, which stands for Alter Raak met Shaak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's always so, a hit with Shaak. Always a hit with, with Shaak. Alright, so um, the game has started, but there, so far there's not much happening. I'm tracking an overlord. Um, how about some Dutch StarCraft League uh, uh, updates, huh? Are, are, aren't you curious about how everything's going? Yeah, of course I'm curious. I, I have been following uh, the Dutch StarCraft League a little bit, of course, but I'm not that much uh, involved uh, since I was with the uh, Nijmegen Student StarCraft League. So I'm really curious, uh, how is everything uh, working out, Frank? Well, so far so good. Like, uh, like you know, we've got the uh, 64 players in the main tournament. They're now crunching out their games. Some players are lagging a bit, so um, you know we've set a, a guideline schedule, schedule for the games to be played. Um, and we hope that players can stick to the schedule, but some of them haven't so far, so we're trying to, you know, wake them up. Um, but apart from that, everything's running smoothly. And uh, right. actually, the first players have already been eliminated from the tournament. And seeing as how the Grand Finals is in about five weeks, uh, I'd say that was about time. Wow. Um, so it's getting very exciting. There's people uh, fighting for the tournament life, and there's people still in the winner bracket. Um, okay. And by the way, this game, uh, you might want to know if you're in the audience, is from the Winner Brackets round of 64. Or, um, to be more accurate, it is from a Winner Bracket round of 16 from one of the four brackets that we have. Uh, so it is one of the first matches that was actually played. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have time uh, to cast it in one of the weekly broadcasts. So that is why Albert and I are now casting it on the fly or offline. Yeah, offline, off the fly, on the fly. Uh, and also, oh, of course, because we have such a, a, a great uh, experience we had with uh, Is No Best in the finals of the NSSL, so we didn't want to go uh, to let his game go uncasted, of course. That is right. And he's a very good Terran player. Yeah, I mean, he? just look at his Reaper control right now. He's uh, he's hacking away at those drones from 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 Storm. He's already got one kill, I guess. Uh, how many is that? Yeah, one worker kill so far. Um, there come the Zerglings trying to ward oh, away the Oh, almost a surround. Oh, that right. was very close. But he's gonna get away. Okay, and Albert, Zerglings... You're, you're, you're gonna have to explain some things to me about Heart of the Swarm, because, um... You know, I've been organizing Have you not been doing your homework, Frank? I, I didn't have a lot of time to play. I've actually only played a bit of the campaign on Heart of the Swarm. So, Reapers, they heal when they're out of combat, right? Yeah, they heal really quickly. If you just have the Reaper selected yeah, right I now... Have. You can see that it heals really, really quickly. So um, if he just waits for a couple more seconds, he can just get it back into the fight. So a lot of people are actually making a lot of Reapers. We can actually see that um, Isno Best is making two Reapers at a time right now. Well, now he's just switched to one. Uh, oh, he's making two again. And Reapers are really, really strong if you can control them properly. Uh, the only problem is that if uh, Zerk gets speed, for Zerklings, it's really hard to keep uh, your Reapers alive because the Zerklings are really uh, are a lot faster than um, than the Reapers when they have speed. Especially on creep, I guess, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially on creep, but even off creep. Right, so you have to 
be careful not to hop onto any cliffs where there's zerglings waiting at the top. And that is exactly what we're seeing, by the way. If you look at the, the, the little cliff overlapping the, uh, the, the low ground at the natural of Storm, you can see two zerglings standing there, posting for incoming reapers. Yeah, but these reapers actually, they are uh, a lot better than in, the, uh, in Wings of Liberty because they are uh, cheaper. Oh, no, no, they're actually not cheaper, but they build faster mm -hmm. and they regenerate health. And you, as you can see, Isnobest is, Isnobest is now using them to control the map like a, a Zerg player would with uh, Zerglings. With a Zerg, and, exactly. Yeah, and uh, uh, Storm doesn't know anything that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And in terms of harass, I guess the Reapers are more valuable than Zerglings as well. Uh, yeah, I think so, but Zerglings are really valuable as well for run buys and such. Um, but I, I actually haven't seen this mass Reaper style uh, lot, from right? any Terran just yet. Um, I'm really curious what he plans to do with it, because I think in the later stages of the game, Reapers are are really not that good because they're really vulnerable. So I'm really curious what uh, it's no best plan is going to be. There we go, Reapers jumping up, Zerglings spotting them, but only two Zerglings, and there's a couple of roaches that they take a lot of damage from the Reapers. But there's so many roaches that the Reapers have to retreat. Some of them die, and uh, they're now trying to get some damage on the natural. But again, the roaches blocking their path. So no more damage for these Reapers, and like you said, these Reapers seem kind of uh, uh, they, like they've passed their expiration date, because what are they going to do at this point in the game? Yeah, it's really hard, because, well, they can still... Whoa, oh, no, they're going to get surrounded. surrounded right now by the Zerklings, and the Roaches are coming in from the back. Um, I think Isnobest was trying to um, pull a big, just uh, uh, to keep a Storm, uh, to, to catch him uh, uh, with a surprise with all these Reapers in his base. Mm -hmm. But Storm was really well prepared with all the uh, Roaches and the Zerklings just in time. Yep, and um, Isnobest now making Marauders two at a time because he's seen all these Roaches, but the supply, supply difference is quite significant, actually. Um, yeah. I, I think I actually might have, may have the, uh, now that I think about it, the um, scoreboard flipped. So the supply that you see at Storm's uh, account is actually Isnobest's supply. Oh, is he going to catch Stim right now? Yeah, I think the tech is going down. Oh, he doesn't have tough. Stim for a long time. That's oh, really these Reapers good. going down, but they nearly, they almost got caught by a pack of Banelings. And Banelings not trying to blow up the supply depot, another one trying to come in, but there's no way that the, the SCVs can actually reach the place to build the supply depot. And the bunker is trying to get repaired, but it fails and all the units fall down. And this looks like uh, well, Isnobest will take a lot of damage at least, but uh, he's kind of falling apart at, at the moment. Yeah, yeah, Isnobest, I think he's going to clean this attack up in the, uh, in the end, but uh, oh, here are the, are the extra Zerklings are coming. And this is going to be really hard. Maybe he's going to hold it off for now, but he's taken so much damage. Uh, Storm has already taken a third base right now, which is the right decision, I think. And even if Ace No Best cleans this up, it'll be really hard to get back. I think if we look at the units, yeah, Ace No Best has just 17 workers left, and that's also GG. And that's it, and Ace No calls cheese and leaves the game. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for our first game. I loved casting together once again. We did a lot of that during the NSSL, and I think we might try our hand at it for a few more games. So how about we go into game two? Yeah, sure. Let's go into game two, because I'm really curious what Isnobest has planned to come back 